And welcome in to Pressbox Live for this Monday evening. And we are brought to you by C3 Exteriors. And you can see we got a jam packed show. Ross Grimsley will join me in just a second, along with the general manager of the Bowie Bay Sox, Phil Rye, and the play by play voice of Bowie Bay Sox. That's Adam Pohl. We're going to find out why it's so exciting to be a Bay Sox fan or work for them right now. But first, I got to tell you about C3. American Exteriors, that's right. They're the sponsor of these Zooms on Mondays and Wednesdays. Go to their website at c3america.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. Go to c3america.com now to get a free roof inspection. And again, as I point out in each and every one of these Zooms, Ross is tired of hearing it, that we'll get you will have no greater expense in your home than either replacing or fixing a roof. You know, you need to know the people you're working with, trust them and like them. And I can say that about the folks at C3 American Exteriors. Now to our guests, and it looks like we just lost one temporarily. Adam Pohl jumped off the screen at least, and I'm sure he'll be back on in a second. Ross Grimsley, my co-host. Ross, I know you used to go to, you used to visit into Bowie quite a bit. Yes, didn't we you? did. Yes, we did. They always put up a, you know, had a pretty good team. The Orioles did. And uh, when I was in Richmond, so it was a lot of fun going there, a lot of play and uh, got to know a lot of the guys, obviously. And uh, it was, a, it was a good time. Good people there. Let me start with Phil Rye, who's been the assistant general manager for a number of years. He's general manager of the Bowie Bay Sox right now. Phil, going back to, to when Andy McPhail was hired since then, we've sort of had, different states of a rebuild. You know, we always knew we needed to get the minor leagues, the, 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 the pipeline filled with talent so you can keep spitting out two or three players that are ready for the major leagues. Do you sense under Mike Elias, the end result is going to be far different because the process seems to be far different? Uh, yeah, first of all, great to be with you guys. Thanks for having us on. I, I will correct one thing. I'm still the assistant general manager. I've just been here a long time. <laughs> all right, um, well, I apologize. I, I remember that. when Ross came through, uh, yeah. we talked a few times. So uh, I've just been here for, for half my life. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, you know, in, in my time here, I've been here with the Bay Sox since 1999. And, you know, it seemed like, you know, there was always – a, a few guys in the system, especially coming through Bowie, which I have the most experience on, but you had a, you had a Nick Markakis or you had a Brian Roberts or you had a Matt Weeders, but there wasn't in most times that, that multiple names that you as an Orioles fan that you knew and you were excited about and watching very closely. There was one, maybe two in the system that you heard about a lot. And, and some of that had to do with the Orioles in, in some of those years had, you know, better teams were close to the playoffs and, and things like that. So the, there wasn't as much attention on the minor leagues as there is right now. But right now, collectively at the, you know, I'd say AAA and AA level, because I, I know most of those guys, you know, you've got the, you know, the, the, the Mount Castles and the Hayes and guys like that who have graduated but you have that that second group of the Aikens, um, you know, the Alex Wells, the the Zach Louthers and stuff. And then you've got some some heavy hitters down here with us when you're talking number one, number two, number four, number seven, number 10, all on the same team um, and 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 performing like they are um, certainly raises that level of wow, we've got to go check this out before they, before they get up to the next level. And, and I think that's what we're seeing now. It's not just, hey, we have to go see Marcakis, but almost every day down here, you've got to come see because there's that much talent on this roster. Before I turn you over to Ross for a couple of questions, guys, i got to ask Phil that. Phil, I picked out tomorrow night about a week ago, I'm coming out with two <laughs> friends of mine. Yeah. And, and actually one of the people is from C3 American Exteriors. And we said, we said, we want to see Grayson Rodriguez. We wouldn't mind seeing DL Hall, but we're going to probably see Adley Rutschman play mm -hmm. for the first mm -hmm. time since a couple of years ago. And as luck would have it, we caught Grayson Rodriguez. 
but there's a bevy of people to see out there right now. Yeah, you know, and that's one of the things we're doing kind of in a, in a PR and a marketing sense is, yes, we understand that it's Grayson, DL, and Adley. Those are the names that, that Orioles fans, Orioles media, um, people out there in the, in the, you know, the, the stratosphere of social media, that's who they're harping on. But you can't dismiss. I mean, today, a uh, pitcher by the name of Cameron Bishop was just named our league's pitcher of the week. He threw nine innings last week, gave up five hits in two outings, didn't give up a run, struck out 12. So you see a guy like that on a nightly basis, a guy like Kevin Smith, who just went to triple a today. That's the guy, but his ERA up, that's was, the guy we picked up for Miguel Castro yeah, last year. From that's right. his, ERA, his ERA here was 1.03. So it's not just the, the one, two, three, and four guys. It's it's, I mean, Kevin Smith is a top 15 prospect right. who you've never heard of yet, yep. but you know, you come out here any night and you're going to see, you know, guys like that, Taryn Vavra, we still have Mike Bauman here who's who's coming back. You know, you look at that, the rotation is strong, but the offense, even guys like Patrick Dorian, who was a guy who was a, an undrafted free agent, released by his original team, signed by the Orioles. You know, he's up almost close to double digit home runs and, and, and you know, guys like that that you just, you don't know of. And I, and I my personal belief is that, these guys are feeding off the energy, the attention, the batting order, you name it, the competition. You know, you look at a guy like Kevin Smith and he's like, well, I got Grayson Rodriguez. I got Mike Bauman and I got DL Hall, man. I got to raise it up too. So does Cameron Bishop. So is Tyler Irwin. You know, you don't want to, you want to be seen in that same light. So I think that that competition, the attention, the eyeballs, there's so many eyeballs from, scouts from other organizations to the Orioles to, to everywhere that are currently on this organization. So th there's opportunities for these guys with 29 other teams too, that they have to be, be aware of. <laughs> Ross, go ahead. And right. Let's see, let's Adam, Adam, Adam you, you've been there for, you know, you were in Frederick for a while. You've been yeah. in Bowie and uh, you know, and the, the Bay Sox this year, well, they 25 and nine, I guess. Right. probably got Best record in baseball in the minor leagues, if not pretty close. But I mean, you, you know, you talk about the, the pitching with the with the Bay Sox, the, the big prospects, but the hitting. There's some hitters there that are doing. Obviously, Rushman has been uh, outstanding, but there's some other guys that are swinging the bat pretty good. Can you talk a little bit about them. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, obviously, Adley Rutschman is uh, what what his bringing, as Phil just talked about, all, all the eyeballs and attention. Uh, Rutschman has been a guy that, that's hitting for incredible power. He's got 10 home runs. He also the leads the league in walks. Uh, and it's very interesting. I mean, his eye at the plate is the thing that Oriole fans don't know about that when he makes the major leagues, everybody's going to start talking about immediately. I mean, he has got an outstanding uh, eye at the plate, and it's going to be really fun to watch him because, I mean, it's it's very common to watch Rutschman work a five- or six-pitch pick walk and never swing, you know, because he's only going to swing early in the count if it's his pitch. And we're seeing that throughout the lineup. I mean, the Bay Sox just have a loaded lineup as far as, as, uh, as as far as the ability to get on base, Taron Vavra is a great example. He is I, have to, I have to interrupt. I have to interrupt for one second. I just want to make a disclaimer that Adam Paul warned me. He's he's babysitting his little daughter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so well, don't good. worry about that. We, 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 <laughs> she might come and see us. We've had cats and dogs come on this show too. So don't worry about it. Barking, that. crying, joking. Go uh, ahead. Whatever. Go ahead, Adam, but, Ross, but Ross, going back to it, I think that if you look at it, obviously you want to talk prospect by prospect, but uh, what we're seeing in an analytical approach um, is on the pitching side, just a ton of strikeouts. And on the hitting side, we're seeing a team that's getting on base. I mean, the Bay Sox are the best team uh, right. in the AA Northeast level and on base percentage. Yes, and then slugging like, percentage as well. Right. So what Phil yeah. said is like you've got Dorian – who's got eight home runs and you've got Rutschman with 10. And those are two guys right in the middle of the yeah. order in the top of the order are guys that have 400 on base percentages. So that's yeah. why Bowie 
is a team that we're over a month into the year. They've scored three runs or less and lost in the game one time. I mean, that's absurd. That usually happens every three or four days. So it, right. it's pretty, pretty wild to see the consistent uh, offensive uh, production for the Bay Sox. Yeah. Well, let, well, let me ask, this is for both you guys. Now, you mm -hmm. know, and I've been, I was very fortunate. I was with Seattle for a while, you know, starting my career as coaching. I saw King Griffey Jr. come up. Obviously, with the Giants for so many years, Bumgarner, Posey, uh, Crawford. I saw Judge Cano and uh, Stanton, uh, Lincecum. I saw Ripken and Madley in, in the minor leagues. All of those guys are different. They are difference makers. And you know, you saw it when you saw them because they did things. The ball sounded different when they threw it. It sounded different when they hit it. Right. And you knew barring injury that these guys were not only going to be good, they were going to be difference makers. And I've asked a lot of people this, who on that team or in the organization that you know, or, or which more than maybe one guy, who are the guys that you see that you, you will, this is, I'm going to, this guy is going to be really special. Who can you say that? You know, I'll go first, Phil, and then you can jump in. I mean, obviously, it's easy to say Adley Rutschman, right? Yeah. But um, with, without, I mean, I, I'll still give one of the big prospects. I mean, I, I've been really impressed with D.L. Hall. I, I think he's kind of a unicorn. I mean, it, what I mean by that is, like, you just don't see left-handed pitchers that throw like him. I mean, it, it's just, you know, th seeing these big, like a guy like Grayson Rodriguez is a big, powerful right-hander. I, I feel like you know, he is, you know, thought upon as a guy that could be, you know, or is the top pitching prospect in baseball right now. But Hall is a little bit more of the unique pitcher. I mean, he's a guy that sits at 97 or 98 miles an hour. His fastball control has gotten way better. And uh, the thing is that Hall probably throws 40 or 45 percent fastballs. You know, usually a guy like that is throwing 70, 75 percent heat and then, you know, throwing. Uh, a breaking ball to try to get a chase when he's up 0-2. But Hall, I mean, he works backwards to hitters a lot. It, it's really unique to see. Great. Yeah. Phil, how about your answer to that? You know, I just to be different, I, I think Hall's going to be a stud too. And, and obviously left-handed is certainly going to give him, you know, plenty of opportunities because – as you know, Ross, lefties get more opportunities than righties. <laughs> they develop uh, later. They, that's right. <laughs> um, although this one's developing pretty young. I, you know, I look at Grayson and, you know, obviously we haven't seen him in person yet, but the right. videos I've seen, the scouting reports and the things that I've looked at, it just, it just seems to me like the ball just comes out of his hand so easy. And, and, you know, he touches a hundred, but doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like it. It's, it doesn't look like he has to gear up to throw a hundred, you know, he looks like he could throw 110 and it would, would be okay. But hmm. um, I, you know, I, I just, from everything you've read and you've heard about him and, and I don't obviously don't want to put undue pressure on, on anybody there, but you know, he just looks like opening day starter for the next, you know, not, not saying it's next year, but when he gets there, it's, you know, it's going to be like, you know, a, a, a guy who starts every, you know, Adam Wainwright, Roger Clemens, Greg Maddox, you know, every opening day is going to be his for, for a few years to come. And, you know, hopefully that's the case. My thing though, I, you know, I always like to look at that, that next level and, and a couple of guys that really, we've already talked one and Kevin Smith, but you know, I, if I'm Orioles fans out there, I'm not sleeping on a guy like Kyle Bradish, you know, another guy that was picked up and, you know, he, he left here very quickly, but, you know, he's pitching pretty well in Norfolk. But, you know, whether those guys become that, you know, that long reliever or their back end or middle of rotation starter or wherever they fit in there, I think that those guys really have a chance to to compete and contribute at that next level. Again, the, you know, Ross, you, you know this there's a place for the three inning reliever in major league baseball now. And it's a very important position. If starters only go four, you know, right. uh, you know, or five, that three inning reliever really saves that bullpen. So if, if that's where they end up, um, I think that they could be very, very effective in that role a couple, three times a week, you know, and, and really, really benefit. Hopefully they can be starters, but as Tampa has shown us yeah. the opener role, <laughs> that two inning guy, that three inning guy, you know, they, they can, they can be very popular and very, uh, very helpful in, in a rotation or, or, or a bullpen. 
I right. want to make it very clear that Phil Wright, assistant general manager of the Bay Sox, and Adam Pohl, play-by-play voice, you guys are not consulted on why no. the team is doing anything <laughs> no. a certain way. No. But I just wanted, no. wanted your take on this because I've had people saying to me, well, Rutschman should be up at Norfolk any day now. Yeah. And, I, and I've defended what they're doing. And, and again, I don't know anything, but I'm putting two and two together that D.L. Hall and Grayson Rodriguez figure to be long-term pieces here. And the experience that these three people have working together right now, I think for another month or five weeks, it's invaluable right. that when Grayson and D.L. meet Adlai Rutschman at Camden Yards, that there's this simpatico and an esprit de corps. Can I get both your comments on that? Yes, Dan. I, th- I think that what's interesting, uh, you know, m- many people think, okay, well, he's doing well at double A. He should be at triple A immediately. You know, the reality is that uh, the double A level in minor league baseball is really where the prospects stay the longest. A lot of people don't realize that. There's nope, a feeling in double A that the biggest jump, uh, other than, of course, going to the major leagues, is going from high A to double A. And if a player is uh, below the league's average in age and he's doing well at the double-A level, he's probably, I mean, not all the time, but he's probably going to be a a good major league ball player, at least a big league ball player. When you look at the history of the Bay Sox, as far as Oriole prospects are considered, Matt Wieters, Manny Machado, Jonathan Scope, Dylan Bundy. I mean, just go down the list of big prospects. You'll see one thing they played at the double-A level more than any other level uh, yep. in minor league baseball. Trey Mancini is a great example of that as well. So double-A is not a level that you see guys go to, hit well for three or four weeks, and then jump up. That's kind of not what it is. You, you, they want to see more of a track record. And with Richmond, it's a little different because Adley was a guy that would have been in double-A for the majority of 2020, right. may have started 21 in double-A, but probably been to triple-A quickly. So I – I understand that sentiment, but in the same regard, he's catching these other prospects and, uh, and obviously he he's been, you know, one of the better players in the double a Northeast league, but you know, uh, again, I mean, he, he's, you know, Trey Mancini hit three fifty nine in this league, Matt Wieters at three fifty five. you know, he hasn't been at, at that level as far as uh, his yeah. offensive domination. Or, or you, can spend, you can spend com- six years there like yeah. Caleb Joseph. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Hey, Mike, Yastrzemski, Mike Yastrzemski was on the Bay Sox for five seasons. And yeah. look what he's yeah. doing in San Francisco. Really, really. Phil, your thoughts on keeping Rutschman together with Hall and Rodriguez at this important point in the development of those two guys, because the club knows that Rutschman is going to be like the quarterback of this team. Well, I mean, as, as you guys know, you, you like to build up the middle and, and catching, pitching, et cetera, is there. You know, I, I personally think, you know, and again, nobody from the warehouse has picked up the phone to call me, nor will they. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I have worked in baseball 23 years. I, I think I picked up something. But, you know, I think it's invaluable. But I th- what I think a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, social media, you see it, bring them up. Like you said, Stan, bring him up. He's hitting well. He's got 10, 10 home runs, whatever. He's played 70 professional games in his life. That's not even half a season right. of professional games in what would be a normal season. Yep. He has, I'm just looking here, 250 professional at bats. He was drafted in 2019 and, and played 37 games and then missed an entire season. Um, and, and you look at that. The, the other thing that, I, that I, I do put out there a little bit too is, you know, and I know this is probably getting off a little bit, but there's a possibility next year, you know, that there is not a labor agreement between the major leagues and the owners and 40 man roster space is at a premium. And, and, you know, you have a guy in Rutschman that you don't have to put on the 40 man roster. He's got a couple of years before he has to go on that. So if you look, if you look down the road and if he goes to Baltimore at any point this year, he goes on the 40 man and the 25 man roster. Now I don't know if the rules are going to change, but, but Ross, you know, the last time there was labor strife and there was a lockout or a strike, everybody that was on the 40 man roster could not play in the minor right. leagues while the strike was going on. So if you look ahead as a fan, 
That's would you rather have Adley yeah. at home next April, May, or June if there's no baseball, or playing in AAA or AA because he's not on the 40-man or 25-man roster? Again, I don't know if those rules will change, but if you bring him up, you risk that possibility of him not yep. being – and now you look at he missed all of 2020 – and now he's missing valuable maybe triple A time at the beginning of 2022. So from that perspective, looking ahead, I just, you know, as, as the person on the outside, I go, Hmm, it's probably better that he's not on the 40 man in case that, that labor situation happens. And now we got to put all these guys on the shelf again right. when they just missed an entire year. Now Adley had a little bit of different because he was here at the alternate training site. He was catching you know, advanced pitchers. He was catching some of these younger guys. He was hitting against those guys. So that, that helps him a little bit. And I think probably helps him a little bit here to what he's doing this year. But I look ahead to that and go, Hmm, if I'm a fan, do I want him sitting at home or would I rather you right. know, play maybe triple a double a ball or wherever it is in April, May and early June next year until that labor situation gets worked out. Hopefully, well, as we all know, it doesn't come to that, but right. you know, you have to check that, that, that roster situation out a little bit. And, and I guess, Hey, you know, if these guys are going to be cornerstones of, of this, of this youth movement coming up, um, you know, having them, having them play together and pitch together and, and, and have that rapport can't be a bad thing. I, you no. know, I, it, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ross, in my ahead. opinion, the, the better couple. team, the better teams used to do that. The Dodgers did yeah. it. You always get, you get a group, the Yankees did it. They always get, but Getting away from baseball now, Phil. I got to ask you this. Now I know I, I know you got a partial <laughs> bar in your office, uh, like Carney. <laughs> in, anyway, now being a you know, GM, assistant GM in the minor leagues is obviously Stan talked a little bit about it. It's a lot different than a major league guy. Go through a little bit about what your your job is, and a GM for that matter. What you guys do on a daily uh, basis? Because I know I, I know what it is, but I don't think the people. Uh, understand that i know you got uh you got the guy that shoots out of the cannon into the net <laughs> we had that down in richmond when i was there but yeah I mean, yep. you've got a lot of different things that you do just explain that a little bit so the people will know yeah I'll, I'll, I'll you know try to wrap it up somewhat quickly but you know on a daily basis <clears> you know and, and like you said a lot of people don't realize just because of the title is oh you're gm you're assistant gm get rid of that guy or hey how come right. you're not calling this guy up he's playing well <laughs> that has nothing to do with us um, that's all the Baltimore Orioles. They handle all of the transactions, who plays on our team, who coaches our team, who the trainers are, who the strength coach is, when a guy goes up, when they go down, when they get released, when they get traded, that's nothing to do with us. So who plays on our roster every day? We get an email from the Orioles and says, hey, this guy's going up to AAA. This guy's coming up from A ball and uh, he'll be with you tonight. OK, great. Um, we'll look them up. We'll, we'll do everything we can to make them comfortable, hotel rooms, those types of things, and, uh, and get them here. From a daily basis, our staff is responsible for the entertainment aspect, the selling of tickets, the advertising, the promotional events, the giveaways, the, the marketing, uh, and all of that stuff. The show that goes on around what happens on the field between those, those white lines is what we take care of. Um, some of us, our, our GM, myself, you know, we're the ones that handle the travel of our team, getting them, on, getting the bus contracts, the, the hotels where we're going to stay. We take care of, of all that stuff and, and deal with that. But the majority of our staff, it's, it's taking those promotional elements, the bobblehead giveaways, the Star Wars night and all that stuff, putting those things together. And it's, you know, 70 events or 70 days worth of events. And sometimes it's 130, 140 events over five or six months. We take that off season and plan everything that we're going to do. Or in the case of this year, we plan everything based on social distancing, masks, et cetera. And then a few weeks into the season, blow all that up and start <laughs> over and have to redo it all, which is now what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but I'll so tell it, you this, you know, to, to build on what Phil said, because Phil's had such a huge part in this is that when fans come to Prince George's stadium this year, there's a new food and beverage agreement mm -hmm. and that's been going beautifully for fans uh at the stadium this year and phil has had a huge hand uh in a new merchandise look and deal for the team this season that 
has been extremely successful. So there's there's so much that goes into what yeah. Phil does, and the, the the organization has done a great job. Phil, you know, do you do on field promotions? Are you on field? Um, so we're not currently on field due to the MLB restrictions uh, and distancing okay. and stuff for the field, but we do them in the stands. Uh, what, what we can do, but once we're able to go back on the field, we will. And when I first started here, I used to be the on-field announcer guy for about four or five years before right. I said, hey, you know, I got to retire out of this and, <laughs> and do some other things. But, you know, everything that goes on in the field between innings, I actually put the script together every night. That takes me two or three hours a night before a, a game, um, you know, and then you got to talk about, you know, dealing, uh, dealing media wise and so for tomorrow night, when when uh, Grayson's out here, I mean, the media requests have been coming in nonstop today and, and everybody, you know, it, the, the COVID stuff really kind of hampers a lot of what we want to do, but um, we're able to get it done in, in some way. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, people look at it as a glamorous life, but my wife wouldn't. Um, she she kind of <laughs> says when the season starts that she's a single parent until the right. season ends. And I just happen to show up every once in a while to let her go out to the grocery store here and there. So, um, a baseball you know, widow. <laughs> base, baseball widow, that's what it's yeah. called. Yep. And, uh, yeah, well, you the know. reason I asked you that is, is if you're on the field, now I, you know, Parney, yep. down, yep. down in Richmond, Parney's got the John Daly pants. Mm -hmm. Right, Phil uh, wears. I'm pants. not. I'm not game enough to put those. <laughs> on. Right, I was going to say, know I, I, I know, know John Daly. I'll get you some pants. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've looked at them. I've looked at the, yeah, the no. chili peppers, and yes, you know, I, I don't know if I can pull that off. You know, I. I <laughs> I don't think I get drunk enough to pull those off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Phil, uh, okay, gonna... if you ever want a pair of pants, let me know. I'll get right. them for you. You'll get a big hit down there. Phil, I'm I, thinking wanna... I, I think I need to go not pattern, but just like the old, you know, what was it? The the 80s uh, Orioles orange outfit. I think I just need to throw Perfect. like orange pants. Just plain <laughs> but orange. You know, Phil, maybe with wanna, some stripes or something. Phil, I <laughs> want to call them the Orioles magic pants. Yeah. I want to I want to pivot with you, Phil. Uh, tomorrow night is the first. I want to go over this briefly. You've yep. got six in a row against Richmond, mm -hmm. and then you've got no, Akron, 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 and then you've got six in a row against New Hampshire. So Correct. you play Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at six thirty-five. Friday yep. is seven oh five. Saturday is 635 and Sunday's 135. There's fireworks yep. three times this week. Friday. No, there's, there's one this week, twice next week. That's what I meant. Yep. I meant three times in the whole yep. homestand. Friday night this week, Saturday the following week, and Sunday the following week. No, Friday and Saturday the following week. So it's Friday okay. this week and then Friday, Saturday, because we can't okay. shoot them on an afternoon game. I wrote it down wrong. I <laughs> That's okay. But, but <laughs> you here's, 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 my, here's my point. The, 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 you playing, you're playing 12 games in a row at home from June 5th on, 15th on. Yep. Tell me about, are, are plenty of tickets available in this series or is tomorrow night close to where you can call a sellout? Um, we do have tickets available for every game. Tomorrow night is is uh, very popular because Grayson Rodriguez is making his first home start for the Bay Sox. He started right. a couple times on the road, but we get him for the first time. So that's really, uh, you know, really got people excited. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, I think the O's are on the road. So that's even We're in even Cleveland more right now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Orioles fans are driving down for it. We've, we've seen people are taking the day off and, and, and or half days and whatever to come on out. So, um, so we've got that going on. And then, uh, you know, the rest of our rotation is still, still to be announced, but um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to that, but tickets are, are available. We have, we have the largest double a stadium uh, in the, in the country, I believe with 10,000 seats. So there's, there's seats available. You may not be able to sit right behind the, the, you know, the plate, which is where everybody wants to see, you know, Grayson throw his hundred mile an hour tomorrow night, but there's seats around. Um, you know, we have some really cool things going on this week. Uh, for, for those that don't know the way the season was set up this year is every Monday is an off day. Right. And then when you're home, it's Tuesday through Sunday against the same opponent. So we have six against Akron Monday's off again. And then we play six against New Hampshire. So it's a unique schedule. Um, we're in, and, and we're, we're playing a 12 game and 13 day homestand, which is, we haven't played a 12 game homestand in 
at least 10 or 12 years. It's, it's been a long time. Um, we used to only play seven or eight was the max we could do. So, uh, you know, those, those for us old guys are going to be a little rough. Uh, yeah. doing 12. At least we, at get, least out we get, of town. get out of town. Hurry up. I want yeah, to be so, clear. Uh, those three fireworks shows are this coming Saturday, the 19th. Yep. And Friday and Saturday, the 25th and 26th. That's correct. Okay, I wanted to be clear on that. And then, yeah, and then obviously this Sunday is Father's Day, which is always a great day at the ballpark. We've got yes. a uh, we've got a, a post game. Um, kids and dads can run the bases after the game, and if if uh, kids and dads bring a glove and a ball, we're going to have a little catch on the outfield for kids and dads after the game as well. Um, Major League Baseball doesn't allow us to do stuff before the game on the field right now, so we got to do it after the game. But you know, pretty cool opportunity to have a catch with dad and and you know take some pictures, make some memories there. We got a, a dad's T-shirt giveaway on Sunday and uh, and lots of cool things. What and then the next week, Bill, what is the best way if somebody's watching the Zoom and said, "Boy, I really like to go tomorrow night." What's the best way? Do you drive in and get tickets or go to baysox.com? I- I get them online at baysox.com. They'll get delivered to you electronically. Um, so you'll get an email. You just download your, your tickets onto your phone or print them at home. That's the best way to do it. You come right in. You don't have to wait in any lines. You don't have to wait in will call or anything like that. Do it digitally. If you can't do it, don't have a printer, don't have a computer. Um, you can call us. I would see we call us starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow. The phones are on from 10 to three. So call and get those in advance. Um, the lines I expect tomorrow night will be a little bit longer than normal. Yep. Um, we're, we're back at full capacity uh, here at the ballpark. So um, that, that's been a nice thing. Masks are not required, but certainly people can wear them if, they, if that makes them more comfortable. Um, we do also have a couple of seating sections in our ballpark that uh, fans who would like to have socially distanced seating, uh, we still have available for that. You have to call us to order those. Those are not available online, but... Uh, a lot of people have expressed, uh, you know, gratitude that we are keeping that. Um, they are limited, but people can still get that if they would like to, to have that type of a seating opportunity. And am I right tomorrow night with all the hubbub around Grayson starting p- first pitch 635? Do yep. people kind of aim to get there for first pitch at six o'clock to play it safe? You well, know. gates <laughs> open at 5.30, so okay. get in. Uh, the earlier you're here, and if you're picking up tickets or something, the better off you're going to be thinking you know, everybody's trying to get out of work and get here on time. Uh, the earlier you're here, the better off. You'll get your seats early. You'll get to the food line early. You'll get parked early. Uh, parking is free down here, too, so you don't have to worry about that, which, is, which I always like to mention. Um, but the earlier you're here, the better off you'll be. You'll be seated. Won't be any frustrations. You won't have any headaches. Um, you'll get through the, lo- the lines quicker and, uh, and be ready to see Grayson. Based on track record so far, Adam, you can correct me on this, but probably five innings-ish. Yeah, you know, yeah you know, four or five innings. Four or five, so don't be late. Upon pitch count. <laughs> don't be late. Don't miss them. <laughs> don't miss them. Don't be late. Hey, 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 Adam, don't get I here in the sixth expecting him to still be in there because I might guess what he wouldn't, but – um, they may shock us a little bit, but most of the starters, DL Hall and everybody else have been like that four or five four range five so range. far. Um, so uh, don't, don't miss it. Cause he doesn't throw too many pitches per inning. So yeah. <laughs> you don't want to, okay. you don't want to miss those, those, uh, those cannons coming out of that arm. Hey, Adam, I want to ask you real quick and then Ross, yeah. I'll have a couple more and then we'll wrap up. But Adam, Michael Bowman, uh, yeah. I just want to, I want to be clear about something. He is a double A because he's coming back and rehabbing from an injury, correct? Or else yeah, you know, I mean, probably been up not at a big league. Yeah, since he's not a big league ball player, he's not an official rehabbing player. You know, right. he's just at double A. But there's no doubt that he would be a triple A pitcher, almost certainly in their rotation had he been healthy. He had some elbow issues at the end of the uh, um, you know, uh, season last year, uh, the alternate training site okay. work last season in Bowie. And he came back and, and had a little bit of a recurrence of it, it seems like, in, in spring training. So in a way, this is kind of his spring training. He made a few appearances in Delmarva. His first two outings in Bowie, his fastball wasn't at the velocities that we saw with the 2019 Bay Sox. And it's interesting right. because in his third outing with the Bay Sox, he was in Hartford and he got roughed up a little bit. You know, he allowed, he allowed uh, four earned runs and two and two thirds innings. 
but he was throwing 95, 96 again, you know, and that was a great sign. And he pitched on Sunday afternoon for the Bay Sox in Binghamton. And it was his first really dominant start. I mean, he only went four innings, but he didn't allow a run. And he was, once again, the velocity was in the mid nineties. And this is a guy that, uh, when he threw his final strike of his no hitter in 2019 in Bowie, it was a 90 mile an hour slider. That was a, you know, the final pitch of the ninth inning. Yeah. So, so you know, they call him Big Mike. He's a big physical if, right-handed pitcher, and if uh, he'll probably be in Norfolk soon. If healthy, he'd be a little bit ahead of Smith and Bradish, right? If if he had been healthy all along. Well, you know, I, it's a it's obviously he is, yeah, because he was a third round draft choice. <laughs> Uh, you know, a year or two ahead of them. But in the same regard, Bauman is is an interesting character because there's a feeling like at his best right now, he could be a, a pretty good reliever because he's got a great fastball and a great slider. It, it almost looks more like a cutter. He calls it a slider. But, you know, when you're throwing at 91 miles an hour, that's more like a cut <laughs> fastball, you know. So uh, but the, the question is, can he develop that third pitch uh, that can at least be big league average? Uh, to make him a major league starter. And I think that's what they're doing. This is a big year for him because yeah. I think he's going to be in the big league soon, but it'll be interesting to see what role that will be in. Ross, you've got, to, uh, got time yeah, for I, one or two more. Yeah. Adam, you, you, I mean, you, you talk to these guys, you're around them. Uh, you know, you obviously watch them pitch and you watch them, uh, you know, struggle. How sure. mentally baseball pitch ability, I'm talking with the pitchers now, uh, Baseball mentality, pitching mentality. Who is the guy that uh, probably farther along than most that we could probably expect to see in the big leagues? Uh, not stuff wise, but you want to make sure that they're mentally prepared to go and handle that up there. Who would be the guy that would the closest to the big leagues right now? Oh, very interesting. I think for for any of the pitchers that we've had this year, the it would probably be who. Phil talked about earlier in Bradish. You know, he's probably the biggest name of the Dylan Bundy deal. Uh, exceptional in double A to start. He's 24 years old. So he's a guy that would have been a full season double A pitcher in 2020, knocking on the door to the big leagues in 21. So that's why Oriole fans don't really know that much about him. He, he's kind of a weird pitcher because he's so over the top. I mean, you feel like you should have like a callus on his ear from how his arms <laughs> gone by, you know? But, uh, but all in all, you know, that mentality is very important um, because, um, you know, we saw it with Jake Arrieta struggled at the beginning of his career, but had that, I mean, just that, that real go get him fight uh, and become a great, you know, big league pitcher. You know, we're seeing it with John Means. He was a struggling double A pitcher for a long time, but he was able to really refine uh, his offerings and be strong. And, you know, a lot of people didn't think Bruce Zimmerman had the stuff to be a good big league pitcher. And he's starting to kind of find his way in the major leagues right now. I, I'm really bullish on a guy like Dean Kramer. I know it's weird, but Kramer is just a guy that's got a lot of moxie. Everybody, and he hasn't happened yet. everybody likes him. I mean, yeah. what we saw him, I saw him four pitches. Kenny Singleton saw him. He said, I, this guy's really special. Now, it, you know, personally watching him, Compared mm -hmm. this year to last year, he's a guy that looks like he's trying to throw the ball 95, 97. <laughs> yes, yes. Hour. Instead of pitching the way he pitched around the plate with all his pitches, changes speeds, great. And now he's a guy, I mean, he's falling off the mound. He's elevating. He never did that last year when, when he was pitching. Now, obviously, it was the COVID year, and there was, uh, you know, maybe not some guys in the big leagues that he faced, but still, he was a totally different pitcher then than now, which I'm going – what did he try to do? Means tried to do that too. Well, Try to come back, throw in the power ball. No, that's not, he can't be effective doing that. Well, we're going to get a look at Dean Kramer tonight. He's, he's up and that's starting right. for the Orioles tonight against the Indians. One more, Ross, you got one more for Phil? Uh, no, not, not really. You answered everything I wanted to hear. And I thank the fans. I, you guys uh, really appreciate you being there and, and doing hey, this. Hey, Phil, you got to talk about this gas we're, can. We're going to talk about gas can. Thing. Yeah, let's talk oh, a little geez. bit about Absolutely. this promotion. Gas this can night is tomorrow crazy. night. <laughs> so uh, this is, uh, and, and I'll use a couple of very uh, generated puns here, but um, so when it was announced last week, which we typically do not get that much advance notice on somebody starting with us. So right. to find out like last Friday that Grayson Rodriguez was going to start for us on Tuesday was a treat. Usually maybe a day in advance, 
on the off chance, maybe two, but, but a guy of this caliber and ilk to get, you know, four days notice was, was, I have to thank our pitching coach, Justin Ramsey for that one. And, and the go ahead to, to say we could do it. But uh, apparently out in, out in the, the social media land, uh, there've been a few people that have kind of used the emoji, the, the gas tank emoji and the up arrow to kind of gas up when Grayson Rodriguez pitches. And so we started getting these tweets at us asking if on Tuesday night, people could bring gas cans to the ballpark. And I had seen the tweets here and there, but, you know, I didn't think much of it. And then all of a sudden this started to become a thing uh, on Friday and Saturday. And so our, you know, Paul uh, Fritchner, our other radio broadcaster, and I started talking about it and he was like, can they do it? And I was like, let me think about the pros and the cons of this. We had a couple of discussions back and forth and mm -hmm. uh, our GM Brian said to me, he goes, well, is this like a one thing or is this multiple people? Because if it's one or two, then no, but if it's multiple, I'm like, no, it's Brian, it's multiple. And we kind of were like, well, it's like, you know, it's what like are the a couple hundred gas like? cans. It's going to be a so couple the, hundred we, gas cans out there. We, no we, doubt we, about uh, it. Yeah. We, we started thinking about it. We're like, well, why not? As long as it's a new brand new, unused empty gas can we have to stress it's got to be brand unused, new brand and new. unused and empty no no gas fragments yeah, no boy, smell right. you, know, you know that wouldn't be allowed as a flammable object but as long as you go to you know you may go to home depot or something get yourself a plastic one and bring it so we started to put this together and put it out there and it started it started pun intended blowing up right um and so then we turned it into a contest hey decorate your own gas can with obviously you know Grayson and DL Hall or however you want to decorate it up and now we have a contest going on where if you bring a new unused empty gas can decorated tomorrow night you'll check it in at a table uh, out in front of the ballpark we're going to take the four best and we're going to put those pictures on Twitter during the game on our Twitter feed and let our fans vote for which one they think is the best That's and great. the winner will Beautiful. win a $50 gas card uh, for the, that has the best decorated gas can. Now fans can keep their gas can, you know, put some rice in it or something, make it a noisemaker, bang on it, <laughs> whatever tomorrow night, make it loud in here. But we have, it's literally blown up across social media and we, we I don't know how many gas cans to expect tomorrow night. Because it could be that. I mean, there could be hundreds of them tomorrow night. We have no idea. I'm no I can see t-shirts. I can see t-shirts and a bunch of other stuff. I'm expecting yeah. hundreds tomorrow night. First full season team night. I ever worked for in minor league baseball. Uh, th there was a monkey that got away from the zoo in Roanoke, Virginia. And we had a, a bring the monkey back to the ballpark. Let's find the <laughs> monkey. So it was like, you know, $5 tickets if you brought a banana. We had 78 bananas. So that's what I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. I, I want to see 150 gas Minor games. league baseball, that's at its yeah, best. You're, you're, well, we're talking you know, about a team who's done back hair appreciation night and, and all yeah. these, you know, things. Hey, you know what? I actually looked and see if we could do a gas can giveaway. Wholesale, they're, they're not cheap. So I couldn't afford one. But you know what? We're, we're looking at other things. But if this thing takes off, uh, hey, you know what? You never know. You never know what really? you'll see. We we actually reached out earlier today to a guy in Severn, Maryland, who has uh, vintage uh, gas um, uh, gas tanks. The 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 pumps. Pumps, yeah. Pump, and yeah. Uh, we tried to get him down here. He, he couldn't tomorrow night. He said, "Give him more time." I said, "We didn't even have more time." So, right. <laughs> uh, but maybe maybe later on we can get him down here. But uh, hey, you know, as long as he throws gas, stays healthy, and and has a productive start, we're going to be excited about it. And uh, you know, the, the Orioles uh, sphere out there is really excited about it. And uh, I think we'll see, I think we'll see a lot of scouts here tomorrow night. And uh, obviously Stan, you'll be here tomorrow night to check yep. it out. So yep. uh, we're, it, it, it brings some excitement to a Tuesday night out in Bowie, Maryland. Let's put it that well, way. I, I, <laughs> no that it. I feel, I feel great for you guys because minor league baseball is all about fun. Right. There's nothing fun about last year for any of us. No, no matter what people's political persuasions are, yeah, we well, can get back to fun at the ballpark. I yes, thank sir. Phil Rye, the assistant general manager <laughs> of the Bowie Bay Sox, and the play-by-play -play voice, one of them for the Bowie Bay Sox, Adam Pohl. Really appreciate your joining us uh, and talking about the events, and we'll plug them during the course of the year again. If you want tickets for tomorrow night, the best way to get them is go to baysocks.com. 
and buy them digitally. All right. And that goes for any of the games coming up on this current homestand of 12 games starting tomorrow night, six versus Akron Tuesday through Sunday, and then six versus New Hampshire, including three fireworks show and shows Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 19th, Friday, the 25th and Saturday, the 26th guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, thank fellas. you so Thanks much, for guys. guys. All right. And I've got to say, before we get off the air, that this has been brought to you by C3 American Exteriors. Go to their website at C3America.com to get a brand new roof for just the cost of your insurance deductible. Again, I know these guys. I like these guys. And I trust these guys at C3 American Exteriors. We'll see you Wednesday night, Gary Stein and I, with UMBC men's basketball coach Ryan Odom. Good night, everybody. Watch the O's tonight on Madison.